Hi, a while back I was sent this Topton TC001 thermal camera and I did a couple of videos at the end of last year where I actually used this but I didn't go into the specifics of this unit in detail. So today we're going to do a short review on this unit and this is a small thermal camera designed to plug into the bottom of your Android phone. Uh, it is also compatible with Windows so you can plug it into a Windows PC and use some software on there as well. So it comes in this nice little carry case to keep it safe and inside here we've got the thermal camera itself and as you can see this is the right sort of form factor just plug into the bottom of your phone with the USB-C connector. You can plug it in either way round which is a nice feature of the USB-C connector but also it comes with this lead and it allows you to uh, you know, plug this into here and plug it either into your PC or into your mobile phone. And that gives you a huge amount of flexibility because basically you can use this independently of the screen and get it into awkward places where you wouldn't be able to fit a conventional handheld thermal camera. So this is ideal for things like working on engines or cars, that kind of thing, or electrical panels where you want to be able to see in somewhere uh, where something much larger wouldn't actually fit. So here are the specs on the Top Dumb website and critically it's got a resolution of 256 by 192 pixels and an impressive frame rate of 25 hertz. And the temperature range that we can look at here is from minus 20 to 150 degrees C or there is a separate high temperature range of 150 degrees C up to 550 degrees C. Once we've downloaded the app from the Play Store, put the software on Windows, we can simply just plug in the thermal camera into the USB port. You'll see the status changes from not connected to connected. And when we click on thermal imaging, it will initialize the camera. And then we start getting our thermal image up on the screen. And in terms of the app, um, it's got various functions which we'll look at in a moment. In the center of the thermal image, we've got a crosshair which is looking at the temperature right in the center of the image. But there's also two other crosshairs. Um, there's a red one up here, which is the highest temperature. And there's a blue one down here, which is the lowest temperature in the image. But we can change that. We can go to this menu item here, get rid of that. And we can do things like looking at the temperature across a line. And here, for example, it will plot um, the dot along that line where it finds the highest and the lowest temperature. So this is particularly good if we're looking at a series of items uh, lined up. Uh, we've just got dots so we can uh, put a crosshair anywhere on the image and it will tell you what the temperature is on those dots. We can also just have a region of interest. So say we just want to look in one section over here. Again, it will do the highest and the lowest temperature in that region. And then as before, we've got um, looking at the full image. Then there's a little camera icon and this allows us to take actual images and store it onto our storage media. So if you've got a thermal camera image that you want to store, let's store that one. Then we can just press the camera item there. It takes a photo basically using the thermal camera. Then we've got some settings that we can change. So um, we've got image in image, which is kind of taking the... Um, actual visual camera that you've got on your phone already and overlaying it onto the screen. Now this doesn't do any kind of alignment or anything smart. I think this is more just if you want a reference for what you're actually taking a photo of. This uh, software doesn't have the ability to try and correlate an image taking with a proper camera with the thermal camera. So this is just, um, say you had some random thermal image you can make out what it was on its own. This is to add a bit of context there. You've got things like contrast, um, how much detail you want in there, and you can rotate the image if you want to as well. Um, you can turn on and off the color bars, and you can change the color scheme that it uses for the thermal image. So we can have black and white, uh, where white is the hot object. Uh, it looks like I flipped the image upside down, actually. Uh, but we can have rainbow colors, red to black, and also red, green, and then down to black. The last option in here is the temperature mode. As we saw on the specifications, there's two temperature ranges. There's the normal temperature range from minus 20 to 150 degrees C, or there's a higher temperature mode 
um, which allows us to change from 150 all the way up to 550 degrees C. And there is the option here just to have it switch between those modes automatically. And that's basically all there is to the software. So it's extremely simple to use. It's also very quick to get up and running. You just need to plug it in here. As long as you've got a working Android phone um, and the app will run on it, then you can get up and running nice and quickly. You don't have to worry about charging it or batteries and that kind of thing. You can use your phone or Windows PC and get going with some thermal imaging very quickly. Now this thermal camera is designed to be a general purpose camera, so there is a limitation on the distance between the camera and the object that you're looking at in terms of the ability to focus on it. So uh, many of my viewers will be electronics engineers or have an electronics bias. Let's have a look at what it's like if we're trying to identify components on a PCB that might get hot. So we're using the Windows software now and uh, this is the clock PCB which I built many years ago and at the bottom here we have a DPAC linear regulator that is quite clearly identifiable as hot even from a bit of a distance there and we've got some SOT23 parts and currently I'm about 50 sorry 500 millimeters away from the PCB and you can see each of those transistors dynamically heating up and cooling down depending on what LEDs are illuminated on the board and if we keep getting closer that seems to be about our limit for focus, which is about 100 millimeters. And when we get closer than that, it starts getting really quite blurry. And you probably can't make out the components quite as well. But uh, because we've got fairly decent resolution, we can see these components really quite well, even when the camera isn't right up against them. But it's quite interesting there. You can see the transistors heating up and cooling down, depending on the amount of characters and LEDs and uh, which segments are illuminated on the clock. About a metre and a half away we've got the network rack and we can see each of the components quite easily. We've got a Ubiquiti Dream Machine SE in the middle there and a couple of network switches underneath. Uh, just behind all of that you can see something glowing. That's the uh, central heating radiator in fact that's warming up behind there. And we've got the cat just next to us having a little nap. He's nice and warm. And you can see the refresh rate is pretty good, it's able to pick him up moving quite clearly and smoothly. So overall I think that seems to be a fairly decent thermal camera. One thing we haven't spoken about is the price. And Amazon are currently selling it for £280 but there's also a £40 voucher. So you can get it for about £240 delivered. And I think most people would compare it to the Fleur 1 which is currently about £225, but the difference is in the specifications. I mean, when you take a look at these, uh, the Flow 1 has a thermal resolution of 80 by 60 pixels, and the Flow 1 Pro, 160 by 120 pixels, uh, and that one's significantly more expensive. We're talking about £474. So uh, this one obviously does have the twin cameras, one visual and one thermal, so it's able to combine the two images, but in terms of pure thermal imaging, this one is actually a pretty good price point for the resolution and refresh rate that you get. So let me know what you think about this item in the comments section. I'll put a link to this in the description down below. Uh, thank you to Top Don for sending this for review, and until next time, thanks for watching.